the cytoskeleton. There's a meshwork of insoluble cytoskeletal rods and filaments, giving you the impression that the cell is not just a bag of liquid, but is actually a meshwork. Think of them as intracellular bones. That's why we call it a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton gives cells shape and also allows cells themselves to move or components within cells, organelles, vesicles, and the like, to move as well. Let's look at the structure, the polarity, and the assembly of cytoskeletal elements. Here we have microtubules. Microtubules are built from tubulin monomers, and we see here that one of the monomers, the beta tubulin monomer, actually binds GTP. That's the red circle, the red ball, if you will. So a heterodimer forms when an alpha and a GTP bound beta come together, and microtubules are formed by the aggregation of these heterodimers containing GTP, at least to start with. Microtubules have polarity, a plus end and a minus end. The plus end is the end at which the heterodimers come together to make a microtubule, and the minus end is where the microtubule might come apart, where the, where the heterodimers come off the microtubule. You'll notice that there's a difference in color uh, between the heterodimers that are adding to the microtubule and those that are coming off. That's because soon after you establish several rows of these heterodimers in a microtubule, the GTP is hydrolyzed, and so in fact most of the length of the microtubule consists of alpha GDP beta tubulin heterodimers. I don't have very many of them showing here, but by far the longest component of a microtubule is bound with GDP, not GTP. Here is an electron micrograph of a microtubule, and when you take the measurements, the diameter of this cylinder of this tubule is 25 nanometers, making it the largest of the three principal cytoskeletal components. Now, we're going to be talking about stable and unstable microtubules, and we need to just say here, if microtubules in a structure are stable, they grow to a certain length, and then they stay at that length, and their minus end is basically inactive. There's no disassembly going on. But we'll also see examples of dynamic microtubules, which first perhaps form by growing faster than they come apart, but then later the process reverses itself and they come apart faster than they form. That's a, an example of a dynamic microtubule, and we're going to see that soon. Microfilaments are composed of actin monomers called G-actin, meaning globular actin. Remember that polypeptides can be globular or fibrous. Well, G-actin is globular actin. These are the monomers. They can be radioactively labeled for an experiment of the sort that I'll show you in a bit. And you can show that there's an assembly end. They add at one end and they come off at the other end, much like uh, microtubules. So what is an actin filament? It's uh, called F-actin. It is actually two intertwined polymers of G-actin. They are 7 nanometers in diameter. Here's an electron micrograph. And the diameter of that pair of polymers is the narrowest or smallest diameter structure in the cytoskeleton. Finally, the third major component of the cytoskeleton are intermediate filaments, and they are formed from monomers that are pretty well extended. They're not globular. They have mostly secondary structure, these polypeptides, and they come together first to form dimers, and the dimers come together to form tetramers, and then the tetramers assemble into somewhat larger structures of about 10 nanometers in diameter, making them intermediate between 25 and 7. And these are very strong rope-like bundles that provide a lot of strength to cells, and we've already seen some of that, and we'll see it a bit more. Here's an electron micrograph of intermediate filament, or bundles of intermediate filaments at 10 nanometers in diameter.